Hello, my name is Dwayne Kimball, owner and founder of KMD89 and VA Claims Consultant, Leave No Vet Behind, and also I'm a United States Army veteran. Today I'm bringing you another educational video as it pertains to the VA disability compensation claims process. And today I'm going to be discussing range of motion for the joints. Okay, but before we get into today's video, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and also you can find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, this Friday, September 3rd, 2021, at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're having a free event. And this free event is going to be uh, going over and doing research in the, M20, the VA's M21 Reference Manual and the 38 CFR. Yes, the event is free. You got to go to the description section or go to our website at kmd89.com. That's kilo mike delta 89.com and sign up. Okay. So you definitely don't want to miss uh, this training. I talked about it last week uh, in one of our free events then, and we're doing another one this week, but it's going to be on how to research the M21 and the 38 CFR. Okay. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into today's video. Again, today's video is range of motion. I have three slides I'm going to show you because there's pertinent information you need to know whether you're filing a new claim for joint condition or an increase for already service-connected condition. A lot of vets get confused. They may be already service-connected for a particular joint at 10%. If it's the shoulders, the minimum is 20% for pain, okay? And they think that their pain, that well, they feel their pain has increased, and they think the criteria for the next hour evaluation is sometimes based on pain, and that's not the case. So I'm going to show you a, a three slides with some very valuable information, okay? So let's go ahead and get into it. Slide number one. Here is slide number one. You can see uh, this is the range of motion for the thoracolumbar spine, the back, upper, mid, lower. Okay. Now, we're just I'm just going to show you the diagram for the back, but understand you can go to the 38 CFR and you can get uh, you can see you can do the research and see the diagrams for the ankles, the knees, the hips, the neck, the shoulders, the elbows, and the wrists. This is just for the back. Now, in later slides, the information I'm going to be sharing can be related to those joints as well. I'm just showing you the information for the back, okay? So, if you look at the uh, top left diagram, you can see the veteran uh, is showing the forward flexion, okay? And the full range of motion for forward flexion is 90 degrees. So if you can stand straight up, touch your toes like this particular veteran, that's 90%. Okay. Um, then you have extension. So from the zero degree, which is standing straight up and going backwards, the full range of motion for extension is 30 degrees. Okay. Then you have lateral flexion. That diagram is on the top right. And then at the bottom, you have rotation. Okay. So this is the diagram for the back. So when you go to a CMP exam or you have your private doctor to complete a DBQ, these are the range of motions that you will have to perform. Okay? So let's talk about that for a second. That's the range of motion for the back. But as I stated, there's other range of motion range of motion diagrams in the 38 CFR for, you know, the ankles, knees, hips, uh, neck, shoulder, elbows, and wrists, okay? This is just for the back. A lot of veterans, they file a claim for increase or even just service connection for a joint, and they go to the exam, and they don't know what to expect, okay? So later on in this video, I'm going to share with you some tricks that the CMP examiner, the VA CMP examiner, <laughs> tried on me when I went in uh, for my um, uh, my back exam. Okay, so told you I had three slides. Slide number two, and here in slide number two, you can see this is the general 
um, general rating formula for diseases uh, and injuries of the spine. So I just took the liberty to highlight the forward flexion uh, range of motion criteria for each, uh, for the 10%, 20%, 30%, and 40% for the thoracolumbar spine. So in the previous slide, I specifically put a check mark next to the flexion and extension. So what I highlighted in red, let's just go with the 10%. The forward flexion of the thoracolumbar spine is greater than 60 degrees, but not greater than 85 degrees. It's 10%. Forward flexion of the thoracolumbar spine greater than 30 degrees, but not greater than 60 degrees. That's 20%. Okay? And then it jumps up to 40. So the 30% is only talking about the forward flexion of the cervical spine. Okay? But for the 40%, it states forward flexion of the thoracolumbar spine 30 degrees or less. 30 degrees or less. So what that means is if you're at 0 to 30, it's 40%. If you're at 31 through 60, it's 20%. Okay? And if you're at 61 through 85, it's 10%. Because notice... For the 10 to 20, it says greater than 30 degrees at the 20. 30 degrees, I'm sorry, 60 degrees at, you know, for the 10%. Okay? So this is just the forward flexion. Now, if you read down in the um, 20%, okay, in the 10%, there is other criteria. Combined range of motion. Okay? So all the, on the previous slide, where I talked about, where I showed you the other different range of motion. So when you have to perform all those, there's a number for each one for your range of motion, okay? They add that up, and that's your total. But today I just want to highlight the forward flexion, okay? How far you bend down to touch your toes. So the further you bend to touch your toes, the less percentage you receive if they, if, Keyword, if they grant service connection and if you're going in for increase. Okay, so it's pretty, I don't want to say it's clear cut, but this is the diagnostic code criteria. Okay, in other videos, I talked about uh, some diagnostic code criteria. This is uh, diagnostic general rating criteria for uh, cervical and thoracolumbar spine, but we only talked about the thoracolumbar spine, okay? The back, upper, mid, lower, all right? So you can see if you're trying to get service connection, you can see, okay, what is the range of motion testing going to look like? You know, what kind of movements are they going to have me doing? Two, what is the diagnostic code criteria for that particular condition? Now, I showed you the diagnostic code criteria for the back, but... There's other diagnostic code criteria in the 38 CFR and the rating schedule for all other joints. Okay, I'm not going to go through and show all those joints. That would be a 30, 40 minute video and explaining that. But what we're talking about here can be applied to the other joints. The range of motion, uh, the distance is different for each joint. And the diagrams on the VA's website will tell you the full extension for each joint, okay? So, like I said, hit three slides. Slide number three. Here in slide number three, you can see uh, this is a 38 CFR 4.46. I took this from the VA's website, accurate measurement, okay? Uh, I'm not going to read all of it. I'm just going to read what's in red. I'll let you read the rest. The use of a gonometer and the measurement of limitation of motion is indispensable in examinations conducted within the Department of Veterans Affairs. Now, I took this from the VA website, but when you see, I, as you can see, I have absolutely necessary in parentheses. They don't have that. I just put that in there to define indispensable. Okay. So when you go to a CMP exam, it, the, uh, the VA CMP examiner and/or your private physician has to state 
on that DBQ slash CMP exam, they use the Garner meter to measure your range of motion for whatever joint. Okay. This is in the VA's um, uh, 38 CFR. I've seen doctors not use a Garner meter and said that they eyeballed it. Now that makes the exam insufficient, but you got to ask yourself, if you got a copy of your CMP exam and you know that doctor didn't measure your range of motion using a gonometer, what did they put down on that CMP exam or DBQ? Did they say they measured it with a gonometer or not? I guarantee you, 10 times out of 10, if they didn't use a gonometer, I bet you they put on that CMP exam that they did. And you won't know that until what? You get a copy of that CMP exam. How do you get it? If you go through a third party contractor, you got to request your VA claims file. Okay, so I showed you three slides. Let's just recap. The first slide shows you the range of motion for the back. But again, you can find the other range of motions for the other joints on the VA's website. Slide number two talked about the diagnostic code criteria. It was for the back. But again, you go to the 38 CFR, the rating schedule, it'll have all the diagnostic codes for all the joints. And slide number three, how the range of motion is measured. Now, I told you earlier I was going to share a personal, um, uh, something I went through on my back exam. I go to the exam and I just had a bad vibe. As soon as I walked in the door, the doctor was not friendly. It didn't like welcome me or, or nothing, he, you know, just, so I had a bad vibe. So I'm sitting down and I live in Florida. So when I went to the exam, it was hot that day and I had some sandals on, okay, and some shorts. So the doctor says, have a seat. I sat down and he wasn't looking at me. So he says, okay, can you bend over and take off your shoes? And I immediately thought that that was odd, you know, because I'm thinking I got range of motion why do I have to take my shoes off? So I said, okay, this is my first joint exam. No, it was my second joint exam, but my first one for the back. So I had on flip-flops, so I kicked them off. And he heard me kick them off, and he looked to the side. He said, okay, put them back on. Now I'm really like, okay, what's going on? Because this is weird. So I reached my feet out, get my sandals, put them back on. Then he says, okay, I need you to stand up. So I stood up, and he says, now I want you to touch your toes, but stop when you have pain. I said, okay. So I stood up and started leaning forward, and I stopped. But he kept saying, keep going, keep going. I said, you told me to stop when I felt pain. I'm feeling pain, so I stopped. The whole entire time, he did not use a gonometer. Okay? A week later, after the exam, I went to the VA um, hospital where I did the, uh, the CMP exam for my back, went to release of information, got a copy of it. As I'm walking out of the VA, I'm looking, and on there, it states, was a goner meter used? He marked yes. He did not use a goner meter. Okay? So that's something that you may have to fight, and you got to ask yourself, how do you prove that it was insufficient? Okay? Now, if I had to do it over again, I would say, hey, to make this exam sufficient, can we go through these range of motions by you using a gonometer? Okay, they may get upset because they may feel that, you know, you tell them their job. But me, if I had to do it over again, that's what I would do. I eventually did get service connected from my back, but it took some time. But I just want to point out that um, that personal what I went through personally when I went to my CMP exam. Uh, for my back. Okay. So with that being said, please like, subscribe, hit that notification button. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. And also we still have seats remaining for our free event, September 3rd, 2021, where we're going to be showing you how to research, do keyword searches in the M21 and how to go through and find information in the 38 CFR. Okay. So if I don't see you, in uh, the event on September 3rd. I hope to see you in my next education video and or 
one of our classes that's listed on our website where in the description section of this video. Thank you.